Hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play. This time we're going to be looking at another classic from my childhood, and I cannot actually wait for this. Um, I won this in an auction um, literally yesterday, or the no, the day before, which isn't going to mean anything to you, because I don't know when I'm going to be uploading this. Um, but this game actually arrived today, and I'm extremely excited. This game changed gaming um, in more ways than one. This is uh, quite underrated. I am, of course, talking about the original Medal of Honor. I won this for... I can't remember how much I paid for this now. I think it was, including shipping, about £5, maybe even less than £5. So, pretty excited for that. Uh, I am in a bidding war at the moment with the second game, however. <laughs> that, I think that one's going to be a lot more expensive. Now, interestingly enough, this was actually made by DreamWorks Interactive, who are now part of DICE, um, which might explain why this game is so good and why it has held up uh, so well. I was honestly surprised when I fired this up to just how good it still is. The controls are very strange. Um, none of that twin stick stuff that we used to. I mean, it does support twin sticks, uh, the dual analog sticks, um, but not in the way that modern games do. Uh, it's a lot slower as well, but um, this story actually was um, composed by Steven Spielberg uh, and the inspiration um, from this game uh, came to him whilst he was uh, creating Saving Private Ryan, which I thought was quite interesting. Anyway, so what have we got on the back? Fight World War II for the first time. I believe this is um, possibly the first ever realistic uh, World War II shooter, I think. I think this is what started the craze. Back before we had Call of Duty, um, we had Medal of Honor. So, fight for World War II for the first time ever. Tomorrow is D-Day. Tonight you land behind enemy lines. The tide of war is in your hands. You're the first of an elite special forces agent sent to execute covert operations, search and rescue missions, and commando raids. Fight to win the Medal of Honor in the only game that lets you take on Nazis in World War II. I'm pretty sure there were other games before that allowed you to fight Nazis. Um, Castle Wolfenstein comes to mind. Um, what else? What else do we have? Rise of the Triad as well. You know, there's a there, there, bit of bullshit there, but whatever. Um, so, features. 11 authentic weapons. The weapons in this game also have a surprising amount of punch. Uh, they're fun to use, man, uh, including Tommy Gun and Bazooka, seven missions and 24 3D levels from inside the deadly U-boat to a secret V2 rocket plant, 20 enemy types and intense one and two player action. Indeed. Uh, the manual isn't actually that interesting. Um, it's just black and white, very text heavy, very few screenshots uh, in the manual, really. Just um, very, very basic stuff. Uh, the weapon list as well is literally just that. There's no images of the weapons. It's just like a very basic kind of written description. And then it just explains health and alarms and, and that kind of stuff. Very, very basic stuff. The disc is quite nice. It's kind of like a, a military green colour. Uh, and has some very nice artwork as well. Unfortunately, Medal of Honor really, really went to the dogs um, with the last release, which was in 2012, I believe. Is it Warfighter? I've never actually played it, but I have seen somebody, um, Jimmy Fails, play it. And... It does, like it doesn't look bad. It looks very generic, you know. Um, unfortunately, it came out in a time where the first-person shooter craze was extremely uh, competitive, and what could beat COD and Battlefield, you know? And it, it just didn't stand out. Anyway, when this came out, it was groundbreaking. So let's have a look. Ugh, let's switch scenes. 
Let's go to game. Excellent. And then let's fire up the PlayStation. I'm running this on original hardware. Which is always fun. Come on, baby. There we go. And isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's just like an orgasm for your ears there. It's so good. Why is it so good? And this game is surprisingly buttery smooth as well for a game that runs at 25 frames a second. Because obviously it, it's PAL. You know, we're running the PAL version. Medal of Honor, DreamWorks. Ah, uh, back when Electronic Arts was quality. And I love this. Oh, it's so good. Such a blast from the past. Okay. Human civilization has always known conflict. But it wasn't until the 20th century that the scope magnified to such a bloody scale as to engulf the entire world. In the aftermath of the war to end all wars, Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party fanned the flames of a broken and dispirited nation, rebuilding the country from the ashes of the Versailles Treaty into a fascist juggernaut that seemed unstoppable. They pushed all the way to the Atlantic in their blitzkrieg with England their next target. But Winston Churchill and his small island nation won the Battle of Britain, holding out through Hitler's terror bombing for an entire year. They stoked the fires of freedom long enough to stay alive and to save the world. After Pearl Harbor, the United States, with all its military and industrial muscle, entered the war. First Africa, then Italy, and then finally, Fortress Europe itself. You, soldier, are a part of this great crusade. Are you ready to rise above and beyond the call of duty? Oh my god, I've just been punched in the face by a fist made of nostalgia. And I don't even mind that. And I love this little menu screen as well. We've got multiplayer, we've got a briefing, some war records, a new game, which we'll be doing. Um, there's not like a huge amount here to look at, but the war records is quite interesting. So we have load, save, new, and we have our personal records, which as of now, obviously, there will be nothing here. Now here's our performance. This is a very lackluster zero out of zero. So we can go back. And as the game, uh, as the title of the game, Medal of Honor, um, we will be fighting for that elusive Medal of Honor. Uh, they are the optional medals that we can unlock, and uh, we're going to try and get them all. Um, I have been practicing this game extensively. Uh, so far I've done the first of the seven missions so um, probably going to take me a while to record this because I'm going to practice a level and then you know because missions are rated in this you can get up to three stars from each mission now the f you <laughs> you get one star for completing the mission or the objectives you get another star for killing 95% of the Germans and then you get another star for finishing the mission um, with what? over 75% health. Um, but you have to get them in order. For instance, you can't just finish the mission and like complete all the objectives and finish a mission with 75% health and get two stars. You have to um, get all of the Nazis before you can unlock the medal for finishing with 75% uh, health. So yeah, you have to do everything in order. And it's not easy. Uh, it, most of the time it's not impossible by a long shot, but it's certainly not easy. Anyway, let's go to new game. Because of course, uh, I don't want to load the game. Good morning, but... I'm Colonel Hargrove from the Office I've been of testing. Strategic Services. I'll get right to the point. The OSS was formed two years ago by presidential order to serve as the intelligence branch of the United States military. Our mission is anything and everything. Espionage, sabotage, subversion, search and rescue, you name it, we do it. Now, 
From time to time, we recruit people from outside of the regular ranks, especially if they've got a particular skill we need. Like you, Lieutenant Patterson. What you did last Monday got our attention. I know you consider yourself just another anonymous pilot in the transport corps, but taking out a half a dozen of the Wehrmacht and then sneaking back into friendly territory is quite an impressive feat of soldiering by anyone's measure. I had your records from basic and OCS pulled. Your instructors gave you high marks for weapons and munitions training. You were the top marksman in your class, excellent leadership skills, noted for being especially smart and resourceful. I also had your university transcript pulled. You were just one semester away from getting your aerospace engineering degree before you enlisted. You had earned straight A's from start to finish. In short, Lieutenant, you're just the kind of man we're looking for. But it's completely up to you whether you want to join us or not. Unfortunately, there's not much time to make a decision, so if the answer is yes, you'll be on a plane within the hour heading back to France. If it's no, you'll be ordered to forget we ever had this conversation. So, Lieutenant Patterson, what will it be? Well, I think we know what the decision was. Yes, the OSS eventually became the CIA. So, first mission, find the down plane, page one. 12th of June, 1944. Bonjour, my name is Manon. Colonel Hargreave, apparently Colonel Hargreave as well, was a, is actually a real person. So that's quite interesting. Colonel Hargrove, oh, Hargrove, tells me that you've decided to join the OSS. Welcome to the fight. I'll be your liaison with the French resistance. We call ourselves the Marquis. Time is of the essence, so push the X button to turn the page and start the briefing. Yeah, a bit of a fourth wall breakage there, but whatever, yo. Your first mission begins immediately. An Allied G3 operations officer was shot down last night, and his pilot... Oh, he and his pilot were returning from secret rendezvous with my Marquis comrades when their plane was hit. The G3 has vast knowledge of not only the Allied battle plans, but of the resistance as well. The whole French underground in this region is at stake. We found the pilot this morning, but there's no sign of the G3. The Wehrmacht searched search parties are out in force, so at least we know the Germans haven't found him yet. Start by locating the down plane and see where the tail, uh, trail leads. The pilot's log book is also missing, so be on the lookout for it as well. Hint, to gain control of a German machine gun, push the action button. Good luck. Yeah, the action button is square. The controls are a little bit strange. We are using analog support because fuck my ass and call me Charlie. It is so much better than using the D-pad. Um, when... The Dual Shock originally dropped. Uh, I bought one. Well, <laughs> my dad bought me one because I've nagged him for about a thousand years. And I never used the analog um, sticks until uh, like the PlayStation 2, original Xbox, and uh, Dreamcast kind of era. I just couldn't get used to them. But holy shit, I cannot go back. Like you, the digital controls of this game are stiff and slow and shit. Um, it's not great, but pop on the analog sticks and you know the analog control in this game is very, very good. So let's get on into it. On to victory. I'm so happy to have this running on the original PlayStation as well. Uh, like I said, I'm hoping to win Medal of Honor Underground. Now that um, woman, Manon, the French resistance lady, I believe she's the main character in the second game. So we start off with the M1 Grand. Now this is where things get a little bit weird because using this stick um, is not just for looking uh, like it is in modern FPS games. It actually rotates you, which is kind of really weird to get used to. Now this, the, the right stick, is for strafing. This doesn't turn you like it does, and that takes some getting used to. Also, to go prone, it's um, L2, which is really quite strange. And another thing you're gonna be using a lot is R2, which is your fine aiming, which you really need in this game, because shooting wildly from the hip does not work very well. Uh, another thing to mention as well, what I thought was quite cool is if you go into aim mode 
and use the uh, right stick, you can peek around corners. It isn't very useful because it's very hard to do that and push uh, and push X at the same time to fire. X is fire. So yeah, but nonetheless, it's kind of interesting. Anyway, let's go shoot Fritz in the face. Hey, buddy. What a nice cold night to see you out and about. The, um, the weapons in this as well sound fantastic. They really do. Um, so what have we got here? I've got a nice little abode here. That's very cozy. You're right there, Fritz. Have a bullet to your brain. The animation of the enemies and the weapons and pretty much everything. The AI is really quite smart. Apart from the fact that the soldiers quite often are pretty dense um, at noticing where you are. They have very short like vision cones and whatnot. But some of the stuff they do is... I was genuinely impressed with the AI. I couldn't believe it. Also, the music's fantastic. Anyway, let's kick the fucking door down. What's in here? Action button to open the door. Yeah, we got a med pack and we've got some bullets. Now, this game does not have uh, regenerating health. Obviously, that was popularized by games like Halo and whatnot uh, quite a lot later on. So, we have to... Oh, hey, pal. We have to use med packs. And you can see... Very much in this game, it's almost like a Resident Evil kind of setup. You come across enemies, you stop, and you use the aim to look around. It, it, yeah, it sounds awkward, but honestly, it works surprisingly well, you know? Anyway, let's go up here, grab some nades. Now, nades are a selectable weapon. Uh, you, there is no grenade button. And they are quite hard to throw and use. Not impossible, but they have limited use. Let's put it that way. Uh, the enemies are quite smart at kicking them back to you as well. So, again, that's something that's very impressive. So, grenades are something that we're not going to use too much. Now, you see that? That's a field uh, surgeon kit. That's like the best health item in the game. Come on, Fritz. Nice. Let's stack those bodies, Patterson. Just the two? Alright. Almost every box in this game, and I do mean almost, is shootable. And look how good the explosions are. Seriously, do I have to remind you that this is a PlayStation 1? These are, And look at the lighting. It is so impressive. But anyway, Field Surgeon Pack. Right there. We're going to be very conservative with our health and whatnot. Field Surgeon Pack restores 50% of our health, which is quite nice. Uh, it is easily the best health item. They're not that um, scarce to start with, but they do get rare as the game goes on. These are medical canteens, and they restore 10% of our health. But a lot of enemies do drop them. And then you also get a med pack as well, which is a much smaller white um, med kit. And that does 25% of your health. Ooh, I always forget about him. Where are you, you little bastard? Hiding in the fucking hedge. There we go. Hiding in the hedge? Jerry's hiding in the hedge. Let's fill the hedge with bullets. The weapons feel so good, man. I was genuinely surprised. And the game looks phenomenal. Isn't it, like, impressive? What, well, um... What the PlayStation, and indeed any console, can do if it's given some love and, and you know, a bit of look, development time. Good budget, I'd imagine, as well. Anyway, let's keep going. Ah, we've already been through there. We're going to, like, ooh, hello. Let's dial back here. Come on, buddy. You want some of this? I know you do. You want some of my M1 Grand? Enemies aren't very accurate as... Oh, we're actually hitting the hedge there, which ain't exactly fantastic. You see that I'm using the leaning uh, motion there, but I can't I can't push the fire button and lean at the same time. Sit down, Nazi scum. The M1 Grand is quite a cool weapon. But look at these guys. They're like rolling and doing all kinds of cool animations. they got some really cool death animations as well, which <laughs> they're a lot of fun. Alright, not bad, not bad. So what have we got here? I played this extensively as a kid. Um, I always remember, like, back in the day, uh, obviously it was Nintendo versus bloody PlayStation, because Sega was sitting on his ass, um, you know, eating glue, when the big boys, Nintendo and Sony, started to fight it out. 
and this was like a what we called the a Nintendo killer at the time. This was so good, which is kind of stupid when you think about it now. I mean, the PlayStation literally handed the N64's ass to it on a plate. Like, there's no competition, really. Um, the N64 was a good machine. It had a lot of good games, but it just couldn't compete with the cartridges. I do think if the N64 used CDs, probably would have been a lot tighter. But, nope. Alright, let's keep moving. Ooh, we've got a machine gun. Let's go get access to this bad boy. Oh, hey, Fritz. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I don't think so, pal. You can get off that machine gun. Look at that. The enemy I was actually going to jump on the machine gun there. That would have been bad. Let's have a little go on this ourselves. Eh, eh, eh. Hey, boys. Anybody else? Anybody else? I know there's more of you hiding. Come on. Do I have to get some nades out? Right, I'll show you how good nades are. There we go. Ooh, that dislodged him. Where you going, buddy? Where are you going? You have nothing. Now, there should be more. There's quite a few. There we go. I think this is supposed to be like an MG42. I mean, it doesn't really look like one. It looks much more like an allied browning machine gun, but you know, there was only so much power the PlayStation had. I think it had like a theoretical performance of uh, like, was it 180,000 polygons a second? Something like that? Whether it actually ever got anywhere near that, I have no idea. Whereas the N64 actually had 10 times that amount. But because of the way the machine was set up and the, the lack of memory, it only got to about 10% of that. Some developers pushed it quite hard and made it really shine, like Factor 5. But apart from that, it never got anywhere near. Like, the N64 is such a strange machine. On paper, it literally wiped the floor with the PlayStation. Like, there was no competition at all, but due to poor hardware choices. Hey, friend. I didn't see you there. Now, I'm not ragging on the N64. I quite like the N64. It was a fun machine. Had some really fun games. But, yeah, just very poor decision. Uh, very difficult to program for as well. Whereas the uh, PlayStation was easy. So, the main CPU in the N64 was like 90 megahertz nearly. And the main CPU in the PlayStation was 33.8. That's one of the little medi packs I was telling you about. I might as well grab it now. And I love that sound. Uh, not only that, though, but the main CPU in the play uh, in the N64 used um, the third revision of the instruction set that they used, whereas the PlayStation only used the first revision. So it was just like hardware-wise, there was no competition. But the machine was just so cut back by its video RAM and whatnot. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. We were killing Nazis. Hey, friend. Yep, they will crouch down and follow you through little holes like this as well. You really have to be careful. Right, let's grab the logbook anyway. Give me that. Give me that. I think we... Did we grab the logbook? We did. Yeah, now we just got to find the plane. Hey, Fritz. Don't be shy now. I've got lots of gun for you. Ooh. What are you running to? I just shot you in the ass. And it's your own fault, pal. I guess you're not going home to mummy. Good night. Let's keep pushing. Some more rifle rounds. This is excellent. We need as many rifle rounds as we can get our ass on. Uh, that Get our ass on. Get our hands on, I should say. I don't want to get our ass on the rifle rounds. Filled surgeon pack there, which is nice. We're going to hold on to that bad boy. Just in case we... Oh, I don't think we can come back here, actually. Ah, well. We'll leave it for the roaches. Hey, buddy. Boom. Where are you running to? <laughs> Better be running towards your doom. Right, okay, everything's clear. What's behind us? Eh, you always got to check behind you in these games. You never know what's stashed or hidden away. Usually some good shit. Ah, hello. This gentleman's wearing black. I think this guy's an officer. But he's dead now. Yeah, there's our plane that we heard so much about. Alright there, Chief. Sorry, but you can't compare to Patterson. And I love the way you can shoot their hats off. That's so cool.
Uh, behind the planes is like another field surgeon kit. There's so much health in this level, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, let's keep pushing. So we found the plane, now we just gotta get the fuck out of Dodge. Which we could do. Oh, hey friend, are you just having a nap? Let me put you down permanently. There you go. No more sauerkraut for you, buddy. Ah, hello. Don't know what you're aiming at, my friend. You're now dead. Your brains are splattered all over the place. Ah, I've got another officer here. Hey, pal. I think these guys are actually like Gestapo or something. Entrance to town located. Noise. So I think... Yeah, I think we're clear. Now, there's a machine gun here, but there's no enemies here to kill, so... No point jumping on. What are we on? I'm on 26? 25 minutes, so I might actually leave that here. So, guys, let's go through to the village. Knock, knock, motherfuckers. Triumph. Keep it up, soldier. These are so cool as well, these scenes. I really like them. And, uh, as I said, like, the thing that just surprised me about this game is just how much fun it is still to play, even today. It really is good. Like, um, when I first fired it up, I was like, oh, God, oh, all the, all the controls started coming back to me, and I was like, oh, I can't believe I used to play that, uh, play games like this. But literally, after ten minutes, you know, I just adapted right back to it, and it just feels great. So, what did we get? Overall rating, excellent. So, we got three out of three, which is nice. Uh, completed all objectives. We fired 247 shots, M1 Grand. Uh, ah, we got the gunnery evalu evaluation discount barber. Because we got, uh, 25 headshots. Not bad. Not bad. Right, let's give this a save. Um, let's go save. Now, you do unlock stuff, um... Which is cool. Uh, for getting decent ranks, you unlock the medals, like I said. And if you get three... Well, if you complete every mission with a perfect score, I think it has to be perfect anyway. I'm not 100% sure. But you unlock a cheat code. You remember that? You remember when you unlocked stuff in games, you know? The only way you unlock stuff in games these days is by getting your credit card out. Anyway, let's call this... Uh, Tai. Tan. Nope. Taika. No, no, no. How do we go back? Titan. Oh, the days when a game was complete. Interesting. Um, how do we... Uh, I guess... I guess... We have no space bar. Oh, that's unfortunate. Let's go for LP. There we go. Kind of long-winded and looks weird about space, but hey-ho, diddly dee Send it. So we're going to hit up a save here. Ah, memory cards. How I remember memory cards. Do you remember how expensive they were as well? Like, if you didn't have one, you were basically fucked. I remember when I got a Dreamcast, I didn't have a memory card for a month. I don't think I had a memory card for ages for my PlayStation either. Because obviously parents didn't know about that, did they? And then, like, when you explained it to your parents, you're like, yeah, well, that's how they get you. They're always trying to get you to buy extra stuff. It's like, yeah, but you need it. Personally, I think um, when games consoles used to require memory cards, they should have come with them, to be fair. Like, you know, just one. If you wanted to buy extras, then buy extras. But they, how much does it cost to make a memory card for these companies, honestly? Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. When you return, we're going to continue and have a little exploration uh, of the village there. So, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.